Yes, my friends, welcome back. In today's latest news, we discuss more exits as Kulabali officially makes his move to Al Hilal, followed by confirmations of Kovacic and Ziyech too. To move on, it seems like Ruben and AC Milan are set to be finalizing a deal very soon. And we have more updates and reports around Kasaido. So my friends, I hope you guys enjoy. Hit the like button and most importantly, share your opinions too. Before we get into anything, today's video is brought to you by friends of the channel in one football. Now, if you love your football like me, if you're a football nerd, one football is the app that you need to have right now, yeah, because it has so many great quality of life features. I mean, not only are you staying up to date with all the latest reports happening from across Europe, there's other great features too, like catching up with highlights with uh, leagues that one football, of course, are sponsoring. As you can see, Serie A highlights, highlights from Argentina, highlights from the Swiss League, the Danish League. But one feature I find very handy is the follow feature to get more curated news around my football club. Now I'm going to the squad here, and as we know, we have to sell a ton of players first before we can actually start buying players. And the squad's going to look so different from next season, right? I mean, we say goodbye to your Mendes, your Kulabalis, Aspilicueta very soon, Kante, Cover, etc, etc. I hope that the replacements we have for them are going to be on point. And of course, OneFootball is the best app to have to stay up to date to all the big stories across our football club. So my friends, help yourselves out. You'll find a link below in the description and in the QR code on screen too. So right now, Let's start with things and I guess we prepare ourselves to give a farewell now to Ruben Loftus-Cheek and if you guys have been watching my channel for a long time, you already know that Ruben's one of my favourite players. I love how unique his game is. I like that mixture of like elegance and quick footwork on the ball with his frame, his running speeds and how he combines it all together and for me, I saw some special things from this guy during the 18-19 season that I'll never ever forget but that ill-time friendly in the states just before the Europa League final oh my lord like how the hell did we actually agree to that and it killed this guy's momentum because he was just on the cusp of taking over and being like the main guy in our midfield but so much time goes by good on him for like coming back you know getting back to fitness you know it was a really brutal injury it took him a long time to really get back to playing good football again but he's done that and right now, it seems like his move to AC Milan is back on the table. Things are currently in an advanced stage. And it seems like Milan should be signing him for less than 15 million euros. Now, that is a pretty inexpensive fee in my opinion. Originally, the club hopes to get around like 25 to 20 million pounds. But I guess one thing we can't forget is Ruben's wages. Like he's earning around 150k per week. So when you times that by 52 weeks, that's nearly like 8 million pounds every year. So when you add his wages and the fee, that's a saving of nearly like 20, 21 million for next season. And I think maybe this is why the club are accepting the demands now from AC Milan. Now for me, I think this is a great move for Ruben. Like I'm picturing the left hand side at San Siro for next season. Theo Hernandez, Leao on the left and Ruben in between. That could be a very formidable uh, left hand side. And obviously Milan have been missing out on some physicality now since Kessie left him on a free to go to Barcelona. Now that AC Milan have earned money from the sale of Tenali to Newcastle, earning around 65 to 70 million pounds, they have the funds now to reinvest. And Ruben was a deal that was stalled behind the scenes. And that's because Maldini Massara got sacked by AC Milan's management. So it's good for Ruben that he's got a very like historic team that he's gonna be playing for for next season. And a part of me thinks it's kind of crazy because I remember that group stage game last season, yeah? Where Ruben absolutely dominated Benessa and Tenali at home. He got an assist in that game too. And I guess it's no surprise that AC Milan were immediately alert to his skills after seeing how well he dominated both their best midfield players. So, you know, Ruben gets a lot of like a, I wouldn't say stick, but I feel like he doesn't get rated as much. But we can't forget that this is a European class player. This is a guy that is good enough to play in the Champions League. He's had great performances in the Champions League against your Milans, Madrid's, Malmo's, the Europa League. I mean, you can go on, right? But it seems like he won't be getting as much game time for next season. And of course, he's on big wages too. And the club want to sign younger players for more competitive contracts and fees. And I guess it is his time to go, but... You know, it's going to be a, a bit of a shame. Like, ideally, in my opinion, 
I would keep this guy in my squad. Like, he is the strongest player at the football club. He's looked up to a lot. He's well respected. He's very versatile. Like, he's added more things to his game. Like, he's better defending off the ball. You know, he's more imposing in midfield too. Obviously, it's a shame that we haven't seen like his attacking exploits as much because he can't really play as offensively anymore. But when you look at his stats, he still ranks in the 90th percentiles for ball carrying, uh, you know, dribbles, etc, etc, take on success. And I feel like at Ace Milan with Hernandez and Leao alongside him, that could be a very fun and exciting team for next season. So all I can say is good luck to Ruben. Uh, I guess we wait for the deal to go through now. And yeah, there's going to be so much change from next season, right? So my friends, that's the first story out of the way. How do you feel about this news? And now let's move on to discussing the latest updates around Moises Casado. Now we discuss the latest updates. I've got more context and news to provide to build the story up as well. But we've revealed to Brighton that we won't be paying more than 80 million pounds, which basically means that 80 million is the limit to our spending. That is the valuation that we've placed on Casado. We won't pay any more above that. And I guess Brighton would have to hope for other interested parties to make the interest more public, be more assertive, to hopefully try and drive the price up over time. But I'd be really surprised by that. Now we know that Man United are now returning their focus now to Casado over Mason Mount. You know, both clubs have reached an impasse. We're asking for too much money for a reason, as I've been saying in tons of stories this past month. And it's not that United don't have the money for Casado, it's the fact that why should they pay 65 million for a guy that's gonna be leaving on a free for next season? Uh, it doesn't make any sense. But the thing we have on our side is that Casado wants to sign for us. We've been putting in the groundwork now since January and based on reports coming out today, positive reports, We've agreed personal terms. Now we've got no figure behind what this wage is gonna be like for next season. And as I keep saying, agreeing personal terms is the easiest thing to do. So right now, it's quite obvious and clear to me that incredible payment structures is gonna be key now to getting this deal over the line. Now, some reports on social media today have suggested that there's an asking price from Brian of around 85 million pounds, but there's nothing really to back that up. I'm not gonna tell you guys to just believe that outright. But I think believe the fact that installment plans is what we're synonymous with right now. And it's making me think about our deals for Mudrick and Wesley Fofana. You know, let's just see we're playing hardball. You know, we want 90 million. We want 85 million. In the end, we've signed Fofana for between 70 to 75 million. And obviously, Mikhailo Mudrick. Now, of course, rival fans love to say that we spent like 100 million for him. It's not accurate whatsoever. We've actually signed them for around 62.5 million. That's gonna be in installments. And there are future add-ons that can accumulate to around 25 million on top. But that's gonna include many clauses like, you know, goals scored, appearances, uh, individual accolades and honors. Remember at the time, Shakhtar was saying that this guy will be a Ballon d'Or winner in the end. So they put their money where their mouth is, right? You know, if you believe in his long-term potential, then accept these payment installments. And obviously, Compared to us and Arsenal, we're more likely to fulfill those payment installments and structures compared to an Arsenal, and that's why we can sign players for good structures. Now, one thing that I wanna get right and correct, uh, I was alluding to in the previous video that when it was announced that we've secured Jackson now in an eight year deal, I was saying, okay, does this mean that before July 1st, we can keep signing players and keep on exploiting the FFP loophole? but I'm completely wrong and I want to set records straight. We can still technically offer long-term deals to all our new signings this summer. We can keep doing that, but there's a limit. We can only amortize up to the tune of five years. That is the limit, which means that, for example, if we sign Casado on an eight-year deal, you know, we'd have to cover three years of that deal and amortize the other five years. But if you're adding things like options to like extend your contract, once certain clauses are activated, Maybe that makes it a bit more easy, of course, to pay for these massive moves over time. But as I'm saying, you can only amortize up to five years. That is the cap. So this explains our current strategy at this point in time. We're on a sales spree. This is a car boot sale right now. We're trying to sell as many players to raise as much funds as possible before the next accounting year officially kicks in. And with all the players that are basically getting announced and are soon to be announced before this month ends, we will earn over 150 million pounds, which is, 
you know, it's good money to raise. Let's not act like we are taking losses and signings that we even just signed from last season. But this is the current strategy that we need to have to continue to further increase and improve the team. And this adds even more context now to the current dealings for Casado because as I said in the last video, we're holding all these talks to make sure that once we find a fee that's agreed upon between both clubs and all parties, then we will make the first official bid. We're not going to do what Arsenal do, you know, keep on bidding and then slowly raising things up and then, you know, trying to like get, gain some leverage over the selling club. We're not wasting any time because we understand that Casado has a lot of suitors. So we're not going to disrespect Brian. We have a great relationship with them. And I think it will continue to be a very good one because I think Brian have some excellent talents. I'm looking at Nsisko. I mean, this guy's long shots from outside the books. Wow, what a talent. You're looking at guys like Ferguson as well too. It wouldn't surprise me if one day we go back in the market to try and sign another player from Brian. So it basically boils down to this now. The more players we sell, the more money we raise, the more possibilities we have to sign new players. And once we raise a bit more money, you guys, the official bid will come in very soon for Casado. And I'm guessing the final fee will be this 70 million plus 10 million add-ons. And it really depends on how Brian allow us to structure paying for this 70 million base fee. And last night, we announced the departure of Kalidou Kudabali. He signs for Al Halal on a three year deal and was set to earn around 20 to 21 million for his sale. Now, we spent around 40 million to sign him from Napoli last season. We paid him nearly 300k a week. We're taking a loss here. Let's keep it real. But it's a calculated one, it's a necessary one. He has no future anymore. He made 32 appearances last season. And the season was littered with highs and lows and not many in between. So he had some pretty poor lows. I mean, he was synonymous with showing a lot of like fear anytime he left this defensive line. He'd constantly give away silly fouls or get really easy free kicks or put the team under pressure. And, you know, he'd always like lose the first challenge to his opponent every single time. And that put us under tons of pressure. But he wasn't necessarily just synonymous with those bad performances. I mean, he started the season well. He scored a banger against Spurs and as the season was coming to an end in those final few months, he showed his qualities, right? And I think we saw them even more when Thiago Silva wasn't in the team and when Koulibaly got to play like the Louise role in the middle of the back threes. Now, Koulibaly gave us a farewell message and as he says, from my first game to my last, it was an honour to wear this badge. Um, you know, last season wasn't the one we wanted, but I want to thank the fans and everyone at the club for your support. So, you know, we say farewell to Koulibaly. I'm sure he's going to have a very wealthy end to his career now in Saudi Arabia. I guess his only biggest regret is going to be the fact that he wasn't with Napoli last season when they finally won his Gadetto. That'll be the one thing that will kind of haunt him a little bit. But who knows if he ever makes a future return to Napoli. Time will tell. But to add on to the departures, Hakim Ziyech is set to be signing for Al Nasir definitely now. He's literally finalizing his medical as we speak and we're set to earn around 10 million euros from his sale. And of course, Patel Kovacic is set to be announced today by Man C. Of course, Gundogan was confirmed and announced by Barcelona. Of course, that kind of kicks out the domino effect where Man C can finally announce Kovacic as his replacement. Now, Kov is set to sign a four-year deal at City. And let's not forget too that Ed Barmendi has signed for Al Ali and we're set to earn around like I think 80 million pounds. So right now we've got around like 150 million pounds to give us some more flexibility and wiggle room in the market. You'd imagine guys like Ampadu, Pulisic, hudson Adoy, maybe Mount, maybe O'Connor Gallagher. There could be a few more departures that could even raise the total amount of money raised to around 200 million pounds, you know, which is going to be uh, quite healthy for us to do stuff in the market. So my friends, they are the latest reports this afternoon. I'm the EFC. This is Blue Lions TV. I'll catch you guys later with some more videos. Cool.